Hello. You have probably heard that negative working capital is a red flag, a sign of illiquidity. Really? Then how do we explain Walmart? Multi-billion dollar negative working capital every year. Or AT&T, multi-billion dollar negative working capital every year. Yet both of these companies pay their creditors on time and maintain excellent credit ratings. Clearly, negative working capital fails in predicting illiquidity. There is a flaw in how we calculate working capital, a missing piece. The missing piece was first revealed in 2012 in the Journal of Accountancy, the missing piece in liquidity calculations. And again in 2015 in America's leading banking journal, the RMA Journal, negative working capital is not negative. You can find these articles on my website, www.smelending.com, or watch now as I reveal this exciting new discovery. Where on this illustration of a balance sheet is working capital? The textbook definition of working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. So let's move these over and now we can see working capital. Working capital is what we want to focus on, but let's complete this picture. First moving fixed assets and long-term debt that leaves us with owner's equity or owner's capital. I will use equity and capital interchangeably. Now the portion of owner's equity that is invested in current assets, that's working capital. Logically, the portion of owner's equity not invested in current assets must be invested in fixed assets. So what should we call it? Fixed capital, the capital invested in fixed assets. Now that would complete the division of our balance sheet into short term and long term, except there is one problem account that defies classification. The current portion of long term debt, or if you prefer the current portion of long term maturities. Either way, the question is, is it short term or long term? Even its name includes elements of both the current portion of long term debt. Well, accounting convention says it's due in the current period, so it must be a current liability. Okay, that's logical. Here's the problem. When the current portion of long-term debt, CPLTD, is sliced off of long-term debt and moved up into current liabilities, this sometimes results in negative working capital. Again, treating CPLTD as current is logical. The problem is we never applied the same logic to the left side of the balance sheet. Let's do that now. There is an account missing from the balance sheet. Fixed assets are not totally fixed. Manufacturing equipment, transport vehicles, all of the fixed assets are used by the business to generate revenue, cash flow. Consequently, a portion of fixed assets gets used up each year. So now look at fixed assets. We know that a portion of fixed assets will be used up, that, that is depreciated in the current period. The logical name for this missing account is the current portion of fixed assets or CPFA. Just as we divided long-term debt into a current portion and a future portion, we now divide fixed assets into a current portion and a future portion. The future portion is that which will still be on the balance sheet at the end of the current period. In concept, CPFA is the portion of fixed assets that will be used up in the current year. This is a precise number. The calculation can serve as our formal definition. CPFA is the portion of fixed assets scheduled to be depreciated in the current year. Every fixed asset is booked with an expected life that determines its scheduled depreciation. So we know exactly how much each asset is scheduled to be depreciated in the coming year. Add up the scheduled depreciation for all fixed assets and you have the current portion of fixed assets. If we agree that the current portion of long-term debt due in the current period should be treated as a current liability, then we must be consistent and apply the same logic to both sides of the balance sheet. 
the portion of fixed assets that will be used up in the current period must be treated as a current asset. And when we move CPFA up into current assets, wow, negative working capital becomes positive. The symmetry is compelling. The current portion of fixed assets, the current portion of long-term debt. The logic is compelling, but now I want to prove it to you. Sam has $5,200 to start his business. There's an unfulfilled demand for movers and haulers in his town, so he decided to buy a truck for $25,000. He invests $5,000 of his own cash, that's his owner's equity, and he gets a $20,000 loan from his bank. His annual payment on a five-year term loan is $4,000. That's his current portion of long-term debt. Here's the question. What is Sam's working capital? After investing $5,000 cash in the truck, Sam has $200 cash left, the total extent of his current assets. And his loan payments due this year total $4,000, his CPLTD. So his working capital is a negative $3,800. Wow, Sam has a negative working capital. That's a red flag. A sign of illiquidity, according to all the accounting and finance books. We must decline the loan, right? Nonsense. Negative working capital is a false indicator of illiquidity because the formula is flawed. The formula for working capital assumes that all current liabilities, including CPLTD, must be covered by current assets, such as cash, accounts receivable, and inventory. Sam gets paid cash by the job. He has no inventory. He has no accounts receivable. Rather, Sam will use his truck, a fixed asset, to generate revenue that he'll use to pay his loan. Here's the correction. If we assume Sam's truck has a five-year life, the truck will depreciate at the rate of $5,000 each year using straight-line depreciation. In the first year, it will depreciate $5,000. That is Sam's current portion of fixed assets. If we treat CPFA as a current asset, just as we treat CPLTD as a current liability, the negative working capital becomes a positive $1,200. This is logical. Sam will use up one-fifth of the life of his truck, a fixed asset, to generate revenue to pay one-fifth of the loan. Here is Sam's corrected balance sheet. Notice the right side of the balance sheet has not changed. The current portion of long-term debt has always been reported as a current liability. But now we also report the current portion of fixed assets among current assets. Notice total assets has not changed. We simply divided fixed assets into a current portion and a future portion. Watch now to see how easy it is to correct the calculation of AT&T's working capital. AT&T's current assets totaled just shy of $20 billion. The current liabilities totaled just shy of $34 billion. So working capital, defined as current assets minus current liabilities, is roughly a negative $14 billion. Now, before we leave the balance sheet to show the correction, let's make note of one other number. Under current liabilities is $7 billion debt maturing in one year. That's its current portion long-term debt. Okay. The textbook formula for working capital shown here includes the current portion of long-term debt as a current liability, which is logical. But if we are going to slice off a portion of long-term debt and count it as current, then we must apply the same logic to the left side of the balance sheet by slicing off the current portion of fixed assets. When CPFA is counted as a current asset, AT&T's working capital is now a positive $5 billion. Now really, we all knew intuitively that AT&T is not illiquid. Now we see it mathematically. 
But wait, where, where did I get the number for CPFA since it is new and not yet reported? Well, remember, CPFA is the depreciation expense scheduled for next year. Since depreciation expense does not vary significantly from year to year, we can use last year's depreciation expense as a reasonable substitute until CPFA is formally reported. Large companies like AT&T have little trouble getting credit in the capital markets. But small and medium enterprises are dependent on banks, and bankers trained to believe that negative working capital is a red flag routinely reduce and even decline credit to companies that report negative working capital. This is unfair for those companies. And it's bad for the banks, because we have been turning down good loans to good companies. So bankers, make this your competitive advantage. Specifically, look for companies that are heavily invested in fixed assets financed by long-term debt. The large long-term debt means that they have relatively large current portion of long-term debt, CPLTD, which makes their working capital appear to be negative. But their heavy investment in fixed assets means that their current portion of fixed assets, CPFA, is also large. So we know that their working capital is actually positive when our competition only sees red. And besides that, the fixed assets tend to make good collateral and the long-term loans lock in multi-year income for us. And here's the best part. These companies will be delighted to finally find a banker who understands their business. Now remember, the concept of CPFA has passed the scrutiny of America's leading journals. Read them for free on my website. And I do hope you like this. Thank you.